Let us today remind each other of a surah which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had revealed, one of the greatest surahs about which it was said that had Allah revealed only this surah, and along with the example of the Prophet ﷺ and his sunnah, it would have been enough for the entire ummah. We're speaking of a surah which the companions used to recite to each other whenever they would part company. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan rajim bismillah rahman rahim wal asr inna al-insana lafi khusr illa al-ladhina amanu wa amilu salihat wa tawasaw bil haq by the passing of time, truly all of mankind is in a state of complete loss, except for those who have believed and do the good deeds and they admonish each other, they remind each other, they encourage each other about what is the truth and they remind and encourage and support each other about having sabr on that truth. Well, the scholars had varying opinions about what is meant by al-asr. Some said al-asr is the time of asr prayer between, you know, uh, al-asr and al-maghrib. Others had said it is the time of the life of the Prophet sallallahu But al-qawl al-rajih, the saying that is most sensible and is most common among the scholars is that in this case al-asr means ad-dahr kullu the time span between adam and the day of judgment the time span of the life of all of mankind and for an individual that means that his life when he is born until he dies his whole life by the passing of this time mankind is in a state of loss. And then the scholars ask themselves, what is meant here by mankind? Is it something specific, a portion of mankind? So for example, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, those who had disbelieved are destroyed of the members of mankind, or when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, for example, is it all of mankind? The fact of the matter is, according to the scholars, according to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, according to the ahadith of the Prophet sallallahu that almost all of mankind is in a state of loss. You realize, my brothers and sisters, that in the Quran and in Islam, we recognize that most of mankind do not believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Most of mankind enter the hellfire. The believers, according to the Prophet sallallahu are like the white hairs on a black ox. Very few are they. They are the few, the strangers. So most of mankind, all of mankind, is in a state of loss. And the word used here is fi khusr, in a state of loss. In other words, they are surrounded by loss, encompassed by loss. And in this ayah, the loss is total, complete. They lose everything. Imagine, my brothers and sisters, someone who spends his entire life focusing on nothing but the dunya, and then they reach that aha moment, that greatest moment of realization when reality hits home. The Prophet ﷺ, he said that living in this dunya is like you're asleep and dreaming, and when you die, you wake up. It is the greatest aha moment. It is something that hits everyone in the face that Allah is the truth, that Allah who al haq the reality, He created this entire universe, this universe that is so large that we cannot even conceive of it. He created every atom in it, He created me, and so what have I done with it? What have I done in my life for the sake of this great reality which comes home? It's like when you take an exam and you get your exam papers back and there's a question that you missed and the right answer is there and you say, oh my God, how could I have been so stupid? 
as to miss this. It is so obvious. And so that's what hits home. لَقَدْ كُنْتَ فِي غَفْلَةٍ مِنْ هَذَا فَكَشَّفْنَا عَنْكَ غِطَاءَكْ فَبَصْرُكَ الْيَوْمَ حَدِيدٍ That's the realization when a person dies. And there are people who have died and come back and they have said this sort of thing. You were unaware of this. And so we removed from you your covering. So your vision today is as strong as iron. When that realization hits, the question that the person asks himself is, what have I done? I wish that I had put forward something for my life. A lot of people, including Muslims, think that entering Al-Jannah is a default. Well, I don't do anything too bad, and I'm nice to my neighbors, you know, as if, okay, I haven't done anything to deserve hellfire. But the question really is, what have you done to deserve protection from hellfire? Because Al-Jannah is not the default. Hellfire is the default. All it takes is for a person to live this life mindless, heedless of Allah, just busy with the dunya. That's all it takes for that person to fail. The Prophet ﷺ, he said that if a person were dragged on his face from the beginning of his life until his death in worship of Allah on the Day of Judgment, he would still think that he didn't do enough. So what about us? When we focus on the dunya and when we are heedless of Allah, the people in Jannah have no regrets except one. When they remember those times that they were busy with the dunya, maybe halal or haram, but just busy with the dunya and not mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is the great loss. Everything that we have in the dunya is gone. Everything. And gone in a matter of moments. Whatever you possess, your clothes, your car, your house, Whoever you know, your friends, your family, whatever you've achieved, your degrees, your status of honor, all of that is gone and in such a brief time. One of my favorite ayat, قُلْ هَلْ نُنَبِّئُكُمْ بِالْأَخْسَرِينَ أَعْمَالًا أَلَّذِينَ ضَلَّ سَعْيُهُمْ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَهُمْ يَحْسَبُونَ أَنَّهُمْ يُحْسِنُونَ صُنْعَا Say, shall we inform you of the greatest losers with regards to their deeds? Those whose efforts all went into the dunya. Do you, go, do you go to bed at night thinking about what you're going to do the next day? The dunya? Instead of preparing for your meeting with Allah? Do you wake up in the morning thinking about what you want to do that day in the dunya? Not thinking about how are you going to worship Allah? How are you going to do something? Then you will lose the dunya and lose the akhirah. These are the ones who all their effort went into the dunya and they thought that they were doing good. And so for those who have died, not thinking if there's a creator or not, not caring if there's a creator or not, and not asking themselves if there is a creator, is there something that I should be doing? Those are the people who, on the Day of Judgment, فَلَا نُقِيمُ لَهُمْ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ وزنا. They don't even bring, Allah doesn't even place the scales, because it's not a matter of good and bad deeds for these people. They have missed the whole point of creation. They have missed the whole point of their own creation. And so this is, again, Al-Khusran Al-Mubin, the great loss, losing everything. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ First requirement is that a person believes in Allah. And how hard is this? How difficult is this? We know that in every soul, there's an intrinsic knowledge. It's instinctive. It is written in the soul of every human being that there must be a creator. When you live in this life with half a brain and you see this life and the miracles of this life and you do not come to the conclusion that there is a creator, then what you are doing is kufr. And kufr is to cover. What you are doing is covering something that is already there. The knowledge of Allah is instinctual. It's inside. Allah all of these things are instinctive. We know what is good, we know what is bad, we know that there is Allah. So those who deny it, those who disbelieve, again, فَلَا نُقِيمُ لَهُمْ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ وَزْنَى There is no scale of good and bad deeds for the people who have missed the boat entirely. So the first qualification of those who are not in loss is that they believe. الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا And right along with it, وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ The Qur'an is replete in saying, الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ Without doing the deeds of righteousness, 
then your Iman is actually fake. If you actually believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then you will make an effort to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The person who says, well, I don't pray, but my heart is clean, is like the person who says, well, I don't brush my teeth, but my mouth is clean. Impossible. And the Prophet sallallahu he explained that al-Iman is a saying with the tongue, ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa a belief in the heart it's sincerely there your faith your iman in allah and al amal bil jawarih working doing the deeds of righteousness excelling in doing the deeds of righteousness now if a person is falling short of these things and we all fall short subhanallah i don't need to reach the day of judgment for me to feel like I haven't done enough. I feel right now I haven't done enough. At least the person would have regret in their heart. There's a difference between sincerity and just making excuses. And you can tell the difference when someone is sincere or making excuses. If a person says to you, oh, I don't pray because, you know, life is so busy. I have a profession, this and that. They're making excuses and they don't feel badly about it. This person is in serious trouble. This person is lying to himself and lying to Allah. But the person who is sincere will say, yes, I know I fall short. I've missed some prayers. I've missed some days of fasting. I had no excuse. And they feel badly about it. That person, for that person, there is hope. For that person, in Allah ghafoor rahim. So it's not how perfect you are in your ibadah, but it is how sincere you are, as in everything. Alladina aman wa amilu salihat, wa tawasa bil haq, wa tawasa bil sabr. Those who encourage each other in the truth, and then encourage each other in having sabr upon the straight path. This is where we fall short in this day and age, and especially in the West. We don't have that kind of cohesion between the members of our communities at all, not like the companions of the Prophet. We come to the masjid, we don't know where the other person lives, we don't want to know where the other person lives. We want to live our private life and just meet at the masjid, in imitation of the Jews and Christians, subhanAllah. Every time I hear a hadith of the Prophet ﷺ, when he describes something that's going to happen in the future, I'm amazed how accurate his saying is. And so here we are, not able to make a tawasi bil haq, because number one, it's become a kind of ego thing. Well, who are you to correct me? Or that's maybe, that's your opinion. Or do you think you know better than me? Do you think you are better than me? We have this ego thing. The companions didn't have it. The companions were thirsty to know what the truth was. And they were telling each other all the time. I heard the Messenger of Allah say this and this. You know, brother, you're doing this wrong or you're doing that wrong. They were correcting each other. Everyone was humble and trying to obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now it has become an ego thing. And to correct each other gets in the way of this new age, western, secular philosophy of democratic Islam. Where you say, oh, anybody who describes himself as a Muslim is welcome. You know, as if, as if there's strength in numbers. And let's not make a big deal about our differences, brother, because there's, what, strength in numbers? No, there is no strength in numbers. Allah says, وَتَوَاسَوْ بِالْحَقِّ They encourage each other to the truth because there is a haq. There is a single truth. And there is such a thing as the people of Qur'an and Sunnah and the people of innovation and bid'ah. The Prophet spoke of it. The companions spoke of it. The scholars spoke of it. They made it forbidden for a Muslim to have anything to do with the people of innovation. But nowadays, our masajid and our organizations and our conventions and our popular YouTube sheikhs, they all talk about quote unquote unity. There is one very clear Islam. The Prophet ﷺ said, Al halal is clear, Al haram is clear, and I say to you based on that, Al Islam bayin. 
The scholars spoke about the people of deviation. And now we don't want to make any distinction. So what are we doing? We are not making a tawasi bil haq if we say, okay, you have your version of Islam, I have my version of Islam. We're not doing that. And we don't succeed by that manner. We receive the tawfiq of Allah by standing for that which is true in Islam and correcting the people who have deviated from it. And when you stand for the truth, when you tell the non-Muslims what the truth is, the full truth, you know those YouTube sheikhs, they'll talk about al-wala, they won't talk about al-bara, they'll talk about al-amr bil ma'roof, they won't talk about al-nahyu an il munkar they won't talk about certain things because they want to keep their following, they want to keep their positions, and it's all going astray. Akulu kauli hada wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum min sa'ir al-dhunub. فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم